Well, hey there, YouTube, P2 Finger here with this little contraption I built today. One in, two out, and a switch. Pretty basic stuff. There is a 9 volt battery here. Uh, you turn the unit on by clicking the switch, but the unit will not power up unless you have a, uh, like, uh, you need to have a quarter inch plug on the input. So if you unplug the input jack, it shuts the power off. And what that means is I ran the powering, I ran the uh, ground through the input jack, which is a trick that pedal builders use to make it so when you disconnect your cable, it uh, saves the battery life. So here we have uh, the unit is connected. I'm flicking the switch and nothing is happening. Now I will take a plug. And there you go. You can see with a plug in, it passes audio. Now, the idea with this circuit is if you are going to run a dual rig, anything where you would be needing to split your signal, take one cable and branch it off into two. Now, oftentimes people would use a stereo chorus, a delay. A lot of pedals have one in and two outs. And if you merely bypass that, you'll get a clear cloned copy of the signal coming out of that secondary jack. The thing is, if you passively do this, if you just cut a cable uh, and twist a couple more cables on there or use what's called a Y jack, you lose some signal. It gets like cut in half because as in the real world, as in electronics, as in physics, these universal laws apply that you don't get nothing for free. So in essence, what I did when I made this was create a pair of buffers. So the, if the signal is actively split and it gets a little goose. As you can hear, I will go ahead and hook up this test oscillator. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm not even using a jack. I'm clipping it onto the connections on the jacks. And then uh, that little guy would be handy, wouldn't it? Here's the little guy. So plug that one in. And uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to disconnect the send and go right to the uh, return. So we're going to bypass this, and you should hear the signal drop. So that's uh, this test oscillator going straight to the test amp. Here's going through the circuit. You can hear it's giving me a dB and a half. Is it three dBs? I, I'm not sure. I would say it's somewhere between one and three dBs of a boost that it's giving me. But it's clean. So there is a uh, few different examples of this when you look it up uh, you can see some of these are uh, integrated circuit based designs I built one that uses a TL072 op amp and uh, that one it you know it worked but um, then when I started actually testing it it was acting funny. Excuse me for getting up. I'm going to show you. I probably did a video from this one. Excuse my shorts. This is the, the one that I had initially built. It's got a 9 volt battery. It's, it's mounted on some cardboard. It's a little s simple circuit. It's uh, two resistors, two electrolytic capacitors, a uh, poly, poly cap and then the TLO72 op amp. You can see here it's pretty basic. This one, I, I'm sure it works. It's just 
a couple of times in testing, it was giving me some guff, and you know what? Um, I went ahead and rebuilt it using these Ace SMT JFETs. I used daughter boards on here. You can see those little square boards by the capacitors. Those are the daughter boards for the SMT. Um, if I have a choice of an op amp over a, a SMT JFET, I'm going to pick whichever works better. I, I don't think it's so much about sound quality, although this one does sound really good. So for the final test, what I thought would be fun to do is I got a couple of little amplifiers here. This is the type of little thing I'll use in testing. This isn't my main amp. Uh, you got to be careful because if you show something on uh, YouTube, you'll get in the comment, you're the guy that plays through the <laughs> the amp with the uh, alarm clock speaker, the 0.75 millimeter speaker. Uh, no, that's just for testing. How about this? Here's a Lady Marshall. I play my southern rock and my boogie woogie on this here one. So what we'll do is we got a pair of output cables and there's a, a 9 volt battery on this. I use this, uh, it's like double sided tape I get from the dollar store. And that's actually what, what is holding the, the printed circuit board in place as well. So that's a pro tip from PD there is this stuff here. You can use this to mount your uh, mount your 9 volt batteries and uh, PCBs when your wife divorces you for uh, asking her to pick up a resistor that you dropped. Uh, you can get your divorce papers and use these to, to mount them for display proudly to all of your friends. So here we go. Let me turn this thing down. So we've got, that's the, the boost on the Mini Marshall, and there's the boost on the first act. Um, right now I have this tester set kind of quiet. So yeah, it splits the signal. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to be playing guitar through this for this demo video. Looking at it, uh, the I ran the ground uh, through the input jack, so that's why when you unplug it, it disconnects the power. That's a dummy switch, fail-safe. It's built into it, so in when I'm transporting this, if it's in a gig bag and the switch gets bumped, it doesn't drain the battery. You say, well, why have a switch at all? Well, I'll tell you why. When I'm there at the location using this, if we're going to take a lunch break, and we do, uh, I can merely hit the toggle rather than <coughs> pulling the cable out. So uh, the only thing really missing from here is an LED, and the reason I did not decide to put an LED in is because I think that a circuit that is as simple as just two JFETs probably doesn't draw a real lot of current and that an LED would draw more current than the circuit itself. So the way my mind works is put an LED in it with a momentary push button switch so you can test use that LED, you know, like they have these, they have these little displays, their, their uh, four digit LED driver thing, and their, their voltmeters is what they are. So really, if I could get one of those for a dollar, I think you could get them for a dollar and mount that. If I could cut a square hole out of here and then uh, use some JB Weld to get a, a, a slide from a microscope uh, and JB Weld that on the inside and then somehow JB Weld the, that display, then I would have a voltmeter built into it and it would
would tell me when I need to replace the battery. That would be the ultimate way to go. Looking in here, there is some surplus room, there is some space. Uh, since this is built specifically for an outdoor live performance rig, the idea of having extra switches and LEDs and stuff that can break to me is not appealing. So that means that I will always carry an extra 9 volt with me, which I always do, and I will have a Phillips screwdriver and a meter with me. Whenever this device is in play, I have those three things. Typically the meter will be in what we call our personal bag, and that has stuff like band-aids, glass cleaner, uh, cough drops. What is it? Cough drops. Cough drops. Scissors. Heroin. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was the signal splitter. Uh, oh, what I'm going to do with this, well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, uh, my guitar is going into this, coming out of my guitar. And one channel will go to a Zoom G3, the old G3 multi-effector, which will go to a little mini PA that has a pair of 8-inch uh, speakers that have compression horn drivers. It sounds, it sounds good. It sound, that setup sounds good. They're all custom patches. And then the other channel is going to a new amp that I'm working on, which is going to be like a more of a clean... And I have distortion on it, but I, it's going to be pretty much just uh, coming out of here, go into a single overdrive or distortion pedal, something like maybe a Carl Martin Plexitone, and then into a uh, like a JTM, uh, a Marshall preamp with a TPA three one one six D two mono one hundred watt plastic amp board, powering a single Fender twelve. So it'll be a Fender 12-inch speaker, a Class D power amp with lithium-ion batteries running it, and then there'll be some kind of a preamp. You know, I built a Marshall Super Bass. I, I built a Laney. Uh, now I'm going back and building a Super Lead Marshall or a JTM uh, 800 or whatever JCM 800. So we'll see what ends up in there. But the spring reverb is. That's what I'm really excited about. And we pretty much got that ironed out. So I needed a splitter, and I'm happy to share this with you today. If you're into this type of DIY guitar stuff, uh, su subscribe and hit the uh, thing, and I'll see you soon. All right, you guys, take care, and peace.